Welcome back everyone, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw Baryonyx from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So yeah, here's our reference image. And yeah, today is day 11 of our dinosaur drawing marathon and now it's time to get out your paper, pencil, and eraser and we will dive right into the tutorial. So we're going to be drawing the Baryonyx head pointing to the left side of our page. So we're sort of going to put a rough outline out onto our page. See, so yeah, it's got a very long snout. And be sure not to make it too big that you can't fit it all onto the page. And the head is going to be at a slight angle. Not quite three quarters, but yeah, getting a little close to that. So we're going to be able to see inside the bottom jaw here. And yeah, make sure to make it a thin and long snout. And then, of course, we'll put in a little bit of the neck. And the eye will be right about here. It's going to be a cavity about there. Nostril, teeth. These muscles will open and close the jaw. And yeah, I think this is a very decent outline. The next step would be to start off with like actually putting in more refinement and everything onto our drawing. So we're going to start off with a snout and really put down some real lines. So it's got a crocodile-like snout, which means it's like very wide at the tip there, and then it gets a little slender, a little more slender as you get further down the snout as it gets closer to the to the back of the head, the back of the head. And be sure to have your eraser handy to get rid of all the mess we made at the start with the outline. <sighs> so we got to put in that snout. It's going to be quite rounded at the top. It's not at all like a raptor snout going to curve up like so, curve down again, and curve slightly back up, and then it's going to get wider as it gets near the back. It's a very long snout. As for the top, it's quite, it's got like a bunch of little hills. So we'll put in like so. It's going to have two brow ridges. We're going to be able to see both of them in this reference image, or in this, yeah, in this drawing, because it's at a slight angle. So this line here that I'm putting in right now, it would be the center of the head. And yeah, take out your eraser and erase these messy lines that we don't need. Okay, so now next we're going to put in the eye socket, or the eye cavity. And the eye is going to be right here, pretty much in the center. It's got a large eye. It's got cat-like pupils, meaning they're very long. It's a very long pupil and it's kind of stretched. And be sure to leave a little bit of blank area there to make it look like the light is reflecting off of the eye. And I'm right away going to add some eyelids. If it didn't have eyelids, that would not be natural. <laughs> it would make it look like a snake. And then we're going to add just general wrinkles around the eye. And we'll come back later and add some more shading. And of course on the edge of this eye socket, you want to put in a bunch of scales. So I'll put in the main scales and I'll probably time-lapse the part of me just putting scales all over the rest of the face. So next we have another cavity similar to the eye except it's much longer. This one's also, also going to have a slight ridge. The brow ridge basically continues right about all the way to here where it stops right above this other little cavity and the nostril is going to be on top the snout similar to crocodiles. So again I'm gonna pull out my eraser and erase. So I think right away we can put in the teeth before we dive into further detail on the the top jaw. So it's going to have very long teeth at the front of the snout. 
then they're slowly going to get, well I should say quickly, they're going to get smaller. And then again they get very large. I think the largest teeth would be right about here. They're going to be very conical teeth, just like a crocodile. Great for catching fish. And slowly they're going to fade as we get closer to the back of the jaw. So that's really nice. Maybe just clean up a bit. And for each individual tooth, make a little line separating each one to show some of the root there. Of course we will add scales to the edge of the mouth too. We're doing just the basics right now. And of course we can't leave out this other little cavity near the back of the head and also the ear. So the ear's going to be right about there. So be sure to put it in the ear. So yeah, we're going to start the bottom jaw. It's got a very thin bottom jaw similar to a crocodile. I'm not exactly sure what baryonyx means, but yeah, the entire family of the spinosaurids really look like crocodilians, which means they probably were fish eaters, or yeah, definitely ate um, swimming organisms. <laughs> Spinosaurus definitely. It's one of those dinosaurs that people actually think was able to swim. Which makes it very, very cool. But who knows, maybe Baryonyx swam as well. So here we got plenty of room to start putting in some teeth. So we'll go ahead and do that and maybe erase a little bit of this back line so it doesn't get in the way of the front row of teeth. So there's going to be a bunch of long teeth packed near the front of this jaw and then they'll slowly get smaller and smaller and they will actually end before the teeth in the top jaw do. I think that looks right. That looks good. And then let's put in this muscle. Very important muscle used to open and close the jaws. You can notice it in today's crocodiles. They have the same jaw muscle. And now we're going to put in the long tongue or baryonyx which is going to cover some of the teeth in the back row here. So um, I took a little bit of a look at this drawing and decided to make this portion of the bottom jaw a little wider make it look a little bit more accurate. And I also thin down this top, this part of the top jaw. So you guys should go ahead and do that to make it look yeah, more accurate. And we'll go ahead and add the teeth on the opposite side of the bottom jaw. A few of them will be poking up behind the tongue there. And I think I'll move this muscle a little further back. I'm always making small adjustments to my drawings. Cause like after you take a, a good look at it, you say, oh, this is wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. <laughs> so it's really important to pause the video and step back and look at your drawing and make those adjustments that are necessary to make it look its absolute best. So right now I'm going to add a few teeth that are on the other side of the top jaw. And remember, make these much smaller because we're only seeing the tips of these teeth. And we can shave this in right away. I will get out a shading pencil near the end of the video to put in the basic shading. But yeah, for right now, a mechanical pencil is fine. And guys, I'll have the links to my pencil and everything and my Arteza shading pencils. I'll have those links in the description below in case you're interested in the equipment I use. I'm extremely low budget, by the way, so 
don't 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 think that I'm using like an extremely expensive mechanical pencil. I think on Amazon this costs around six ninety five or something, which is expensive for a pencil, but it lasts so long that it's totally worth the money. So again, we're gonna add a little bit of scales on the edge here, with the bottom jaw, and of course we're gonna put in a lot of shading in there. Let's put some more curvy lines on this muscle. Now I'd pretty much say that yeah, the bottom third of this jaw is going to be nice and shaded. And of course I'm going to add scales all over the face and bottom jaw, which will be probably the next step after I put in some of the neck. So yeah, for the neck you want to have a little bit of skin hanging down, similar to like an iguana. And very important to put these neck veins in to make it look more realistic. And the reference image I'm looking at doesn't have any, like any major spikes on the, the back of the neck, so we'll, we'll leave those out, but feel free to put in spikes on the back of, on the top of the neck of your baryonyx. Yeah, I'm going to try and make it look as close as possible to the baryonyx from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, so that's why I'm not going to put in any spikes. And yeah, the next portion of this video will be time-lapse because I'm just going to be adding scales all over the face and bottom jaw. And you guys can just um, pause the video after I finish with the scales and copy the way I put them in. Or yeah, just do the scales however you see fit. So I'll see you guys in a minute. So guys, we're entering the final stage of our drawing, which is the shading stage. So I get out a shading pencil. Today I'm going to be using a 3B paint, uh, shading pencil. And yeah, as you can see, I left a few spots without um, scales. And that's because we don't need to draw scales there because they're going to be, it's all going to be shaded in, in that area. So let's go ahead and start with the bottom jaw. Maybe I should start on this side to avoid smudging. But yeah, anything that I didn't put scales on is most likely going to be shaded and pretty dark. <clears throat> and there are some areas that I did put scales in that's going to have some more light shading. So you don't have to press too hard. I don't want to make the contrast too too much between the, the scales and the shading here. And that's why we're going to put a little bit of shading on top of some of the scales there in a moment. See, so I move your pencil in a circular motion Really trying to just get a nice um, tone, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I'll have a nice layer of graphite there. And now we can shade lightly so the edge is not so, so sharp there. Don't shade too dark that you're just going to mess up all the beautiful scales we just put in. In case you guys are wondering, that took me exactly 22 minutes to do all the scales there. So it is going to add a bunch um, of time to your drawing if you choose to put in scales. 
But this drawing will look, probably look fine without scales as well. Just the scales will make it look more professional. Okay, so next we're going to add shading to this muscle. I'm going to add a lot of shading to the top portion of it. Mainly because this top part of the top jaw is going to sort of yeah, cast a shadow on onto the muscle. And maybe a little bit on the bottom. So already it's looking a lot better. It looks more 3D. And that's the whole point of art is to try and like convince people that this is a real thing. You want to make it look as realistic as possible. And now I'm going to take out like a 6B pencil or something that's a little darker. And we're going to shade in. We're going to shade in the inside of the mouth. And we're starting off with the opposite muscle. This is going to be dark. You have to make it dark so this, at least it will make this darkness stand out. And that's why it's useful for not all drawings, but yeah, it's useful to have some shading pencils on hand. So if you don't have a set of shading pencils, I'd highly recommend you get one soon. Okay, now I think I will switch back to my 3B pencil for the shading of the tongue. And here is actually where I'm going to take my eraser and redraw some of these little teeth because I know they're going to look much smaller once we put black all the way around them. So we're going to make them a little wider and a little bigger. They might look a little bit too big right now to you, but once you see what we're going to do, you'll see why it's so smart to make them that size because as soon as you put like darkness around teeth they immediately shrink in size as you can see that's what happened already happened when we put the blackness around the teeth see so yeah, it's going to be nice and dark between each of these teeth Now, and that's also making the tongue pop out a little more. So that's really nice, guys. Now I'm going to just add some more lines to this tongue to give it a round look. I'm going to redraw the center line <clears throat> that goes down the center of the tongue. So we'll redraw that like so. Add some more round lines there. And then if you have a smudge on hand, I highly recommend you use it. So I just want to give the whole tongue a darker color. But I don't want to shade it in too dark, you know. The smudger it comes in handy in this type of situation. So yeah, I just added another, yeah, like another, it's like a different type of shadow, you know. It's more like a, not even a shadow, it's more like a color, if you get what I mean. And now we're going to move on to the top jaw. So for the top jaw, yeah, it doesn't have as much shadow as the bottom jaw, but it does have some dark areas. So we'll go ahead and hit those right away. The first one is the one I'm working on right now, which is the the middle and largest cavity on the side of the face. So that looks pretty good. Maybe you want to do a little bit of cross hatching because all those lines in the same direction looks kind of weird. So that looks nice. I'm going to maybe add a little bit more to this eye socket. I'll 
I'll shade in this back cavity. And there's this little cavity here in the front that could be mistaken as the nose, but it's not. The nostril is right about there, which I might have drawn a little small. And then we can also add a little bit of shading to each of the teeth. But first I'm just going to shade yeah, the, the bottom portion of the snout just to give it a little bit more, more color. Once you put the shade in, you'll find that the drawing looks like, yeah, a lot more 3D. Looks a lot more shapely. And it sort of brings the whole dinosaur more to life, you know? It goes looking like a drawing, to more like a photograph now. And I'll use my smudger again. So we are smudging over a bunch of our beautiful scales. But again, if you want the shading to look really nice, you got to go over those scales. And all, But the scales have a nice effect. You can sort of see them under there, which looks better than like the, the bottom of the jaw here where I didn't put any scales in. And it, you can sort of tell, you know, <laughs> that we wanted to save time so we didn't draw the scales under there. But yeah, if you do have the time, it'll look better because it'll look more like the top jaw, which it's a really cool effect right now. So I'm just more shading in these cavities. I don't want to overshade because sometimes I can do that. I'll get too enthusiastic to start shading everything. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to shade in a few more areas. But it's important to leave some light spots too. <clears throat> so I have smudged a lot, unfortunately, but that is not too hard to clean up. I'm going to really darken this vein on the neck, add a lot of curved vertical lines going up. And since this video is titled How to Draw a Baryonyx Head and Not the Neck, we're not going to focus too much on the neck today. Basically do a bunch of horizontal lines for the bottom half and a lot of vertical curved lines for the top and add shading if you wish. But today, because the video is already pretty long, I'm not going to do much more with the neck. Should probably shade it in a little more than that at the, for the bottom, bottom portion. I'll just add some more lines. I'm really interested to know how many how many of the drawings of this marathon you guys are doing. So comment below how many of you, you've completed thus far. I would be super amazed if someone's actually doing all of them. That would be really impressive. If you did the whole marathon, you could you'd have so much experience with drawing dinosaurs, you could start your own channel and everything. Okay, so the neck looks pretty good. It's a little rough, I know, but I think it's acceptable. And now I think I'll just take my eraser and clean things up a bit. And one more thing that I might do is just to add a little bit more lines to these teeth. Make them look more realistic. You don't want, you don't want them to all look perfectly sparkling white. And adding lines will show you sort of like the graininess of the, or like more of the texture of the tooth. But other than that, I'd say our drawing is pretty much completed. If you did the Monolophosaurus head drawing, this one will be much easier because they're very much the same. And I'm planning sometime in the future to also draw Allosaurus's head from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But that head will be pointing in the other direction, so it'll be a little different, but a lot of the things will be the same, you know, like the shading and the scales. So I'm just adding a little bit more color, 
and now I'll clean up the drawing and then we will sign our drawings and be done. So guys, I'm very, very proud with how this drawing turned out. Now it's time to sign our drawings. So I'll do that in the corner here of our Baragonic's head. Put in the date. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this drawing was really challenging. So if you stuck with it to the end, I'm really proud of you. Be sure to post your drawing on Instagram and tag me so I can take a look at it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow in episode 10. Or, yeah, episode 12, I think, of my Dan Danny the Dinosaur Drawing Marathon. Oh, 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 oh,